things are about ready to get serious with the economy. Hey, everybody, you're watching Bull Boom, Bear Bust, back with another dose. It's been a few days. Thank you for those that are back, back watching this today. I really appreciate it. Uh, for the last few days, I've been out, obviously, and it was on a little vacation that I took for one of my kids' birthdays. We'll talk about that. Um, the place that we went to was a kind of a resort place, a hotel that had like an indoor water park. And we'll talk about the costs and how people were spending money just like crazy, like there was no problems, like like debt was not at all-time highs. But first, let's get into a lot of news. We have to catch up on a lot of news. The economy continues to look like it's expanding, look like it's growing, people spending money. But some very serious threats are now emerging. And we're going to have a, a battle between inflationary and deflationary forces. First, let's go ahead and start. Right here, out of PR News, U.S. household debt soars. Many Americans worry they can't keep up, but at the same time, we have reports like the following. Out of Reuters, U.S. consumer sentiment ticks up post-election. So what, which is it? Which is it? Well, it's pretty divided. There's a lot of people that are very hopeful, optimistic, just like we see the divide uh, between the left and the right in this country, the blue versus the red, uh, politically. Uh, a lot of people on one side are very optimistic. They think the economy is going to boom and they think that's going to be better for their own wallets and for their own budgets and for their own finances. Other people say, no, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be massive inflationary because they're reading the stories about how inflation is going to skyrocket because of tariffs and because of lots of other things. But there's also some deflationary forces that I don't think many people are talking about, right? So let's go ahead and start with the possible deflationary forces that I see uh, coming up and very soon uh, headwinds here with the economy. We have something that could be a major deflationary force. And what's that going to be? Mega job losses. We have the new administration coming out talking about plans for, quote, mass federal layoffs. And basically talking about axing a lot of federal agencies, uh, a lot of them. And this could be massive deflation, folks, deflationary. But there's inflationary forces, too. We're going to talk about that next. So what's going to win, the deflationary or the inflationary force? Or will it be 50-50 and we'll see stagflation, meaning little to no economic growth, but a rising cost, rising price environment, folks? But take a look at this, though. Massive layoffs out of federal agencies and federal jobs. What's that going to mean? Well, think about over the past year or two. The jobs were even more, three or four years now. The jobs report, what was one of the biggest categories for what they called job growth or job creation? It was government jobs because the government, they can go out and spend endless amounts of money, open up all kinds of new agencies, hire new agents for this, that, and everything else. And that's what happens when you have endless amounts of money that you can borrow. There's no limit to the amount of debt uh, that they can take on or create, whichever way you want to look at it. So that always gave the opportunity to just create jobs, even though the jobs may not be needed. And then you hear talk about, uh, you hear a lot of people talk about, you know, this is too much uh, growth in this particular sector when you look at government jobs. But take those away now. Not just no more jobs being added in that sector, but jobs shrinking very rapidly, like maybe in a matter of weeks if they have their way, the new administration. And that's going to be deflationary. All those billions of dollars in salaries that combined, that collectively that group made, we're talking about the uh, the workers, no longer being spent out in the economy, right? Millions of new people not qualifying for home loans and mortgages, not spending because they lost their job. Where else are they going to go find work that's going to pay like the, the type of money they made in that government position? Remember, government jobs on average pay a good chunk higher than just regular uh, private sector jobs. So massive deflation just in that area. But we also have inflationary forces. We have the new administration again coming in talking about more deregulation. I had a couple people in comments ask me, what do you mean deregulation? They didn't say that. Yes, they did say that. Uh, they might not, have, might not have said it in those particular or exact words or phrase, but take a look at what Jamie Dimon says. And uh, I'll just pull up a couple headlines that came out just in the past week or so. Uh, Diamond says bankers are dancing in the street and they're buzzing. 
buzzing at the prospect of deregulation in the banking industry, folks. Remember, they were fighting against tighter capital rules, meaning the banks wanted to be able to loan out infinite amounts of money without having hardly anything in reserves. In other words, even if people no longer deposited money in the banks, the vaults could be completely empty. Uh, They still wanted the ability to still make an endless amount of loans, folks. And that's how you see people out there spending money still when really they don't have much in savings because you don't have to have anything in savings in the banks with a zero reserve requirement. Uh, Another headline in the post here, Jamie Dimon says bankers dancing in the street. I didn't make this stuff up, folks. This is what the banks, in this case, Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan Chase, they are expecting because that's the message that they got out of the administration. Now, will the administration follow through on what they're saying? Um, Wall Street bankers, regardless of who uh, they opted for, are jumping for joy because of this announcement, folks. So they're not making enough money already, right? These CEOs, these multi-billionaires, billionaires with a B, looking for more profits, looking for more deregulation, folks. It's insane. But guess what? Crazy town's only going to expand. Crazy town is growing and it's only going to get worse. But again, what's going to win? We have some deflationary forces and inflationary, more inflationary forces, the tariffs, right? What else is it? Well, people getting maxed out on debt, that's deflationary because if they can't spend money, but then again, if the banks are deregulated, they can just increase people's credit lines regardless of how many people become late on their payments. There could be a massive avalanche of defaults in car loans, home loans late credit card payments, and the banks will still keep lending instead of tightening like they normally would if you have massive deregulation and banks are allowed to basically be unleashed with their lending. It doesn't matter how many losses they have because they are guaranteed backdoor bailouts with the money creation and still loaning out money, still increasing credit limits, even though we're in a rapidly rising default and delinquency environment, right? Crazy times, folks. It's uh, it's it's wacky town, crazy town, whatever you want to call it. What do you think we have coming? What would you call this? What would you call this? The new administration coming in. We've never seen anything like this with such drastic changes being discussed and likely being implemented unless something big drops before uh, what January, uh, late January. This is going to be something we'll have to keep an eye on, folks. All right. And. Because of this and many other things, people are frightened and they're scared about their budgets, about their financial situation, and about the economy, which is all basically connected. Take a look at this. A massive spike in vasectomies. Vasectomies, for those that don't know, these people sound like they're having um, a fright about creating new family members, so to speak. A 1,200% spike and people are basically wanting to get fixed. And why are we seeing that? All of a sudden, people don't want to have families? Well, yeah, because why do you think? The cost, the cost of living. People don't want to barely scrape by. People are barely, even single people, in many cases, barely scraping by. If you look at the surveys, even the single people, unmarried people, having trouble, having major concerns about the economy, the cost of living. All right, their budgets being squeezed, even single people. So what does that mean if you have a family to pay for? All right? So not many people are looking to take on that type of extra cost burden. And that's why you see headlines like that, a 1,200% spike in these types of appointments. I mean, that's what I get out of it. What do you think about that, that headline? A 1,200% spike in people getting fixed. Uh, that's what I get out of it. Uh, anyways, let's move on to the next story here, folks. And let's jump over to a little housing market news. The housing bubble in parts of the country, it's expanding, meaning home prices still rising. In other parts of the country, in some states, actually dropping. So it's definitely regional at this point. And uh, you've heard the term that real estate is local. In this case, it's state to state. And here's an example of rising prices. Inflation Let me get the right headline here. In home prices, Wisconsin median home price rises to $310,000 from last year. That's up 10%, folks. And that's Wisconsin. But there's many states that are seeing falling prices. And if you look at the chart on this here, it looks to be that the number of states 
with falling prices is outpacing the number of states with rising prices. Again, let's go to the Fed chart here, and let's just go to a five-year chart. We see that the median home price, according to the Fed, peaked out in the fourth quarter, 2022, at 442000 and the latest report down to 420000 So we're down over $20,000 in the median home price. This is nationwide. So we're going to see the next report come out uh, shortly, and we'll be on top of that for you. But here's the latest report we have. Actually, we're going to be a couple months still because we have to wait for the fourth quarter numbers that came out. Uh, this chart shows the third quarter numbers, and obviously we have to wait until late January to get the end of the fourth quarter numbers. So we'll see how this plays out, but will the median home price nationwide continue to drop? Well, especially if you see massive layoffs like they're talking about out of these government jobs, folks, you could see the beginning of the end of this housing bubble. Some argue because we're already down so significantly from the peak, over $20,000. Some argue that we've already seen the peak and that the bubble is already deflating. Well, the problem with that is you're not seeing that in every state. Just like the previous headline, Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin are still seeing rising home prices. But some of the coastal states that got uh, bubble type of prices initially are seeing prices drop, like California. Uh, we've got Florida coming down pretty significantly. So, of course, we're always going to keep an eye here on the housing bubble for you. So please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a report here because we're going to uh, be at the tip of the spear uh, for the housing market reporting. All right, staying on the topic of housing, in this case, we're going to jump over to rents. And this is according to Realtor.com. In October, rents fell again. And this is the 15th straight month of year over year decline. Realtor October rental report shows rents declined 0.8% to 1,720, making the 15th consecutive month of year over year price decreases. Uh, the rental market is experiencing a downward pressure due to increased supply with a lot of multifamily completions reaching 606,000 units between January and September. So inventory growing and there was a lot of people that thought the new population coming into the U.S. was going to be just continuous inflation because of the shortage and these people needing a place to live. But we're actually seeing still some deflation in rentals. Now, I think it would be a lot more. And I think just the math of this tells us that it would be a lot of a bigger drop in rents if we didn't have this influx of new population. But you could see the fact that people are so tapped out financially, it's causing people to have to be more choosy on what they pay for rents, right? So another area, another sector, in this case, housing and rents, so we'll have to keep an eye on for you. Now, if you want to zoom in on some particular cities that are seeing some pretty significant price drops, larger than the average. Uh, these are cities that saw big influxes over the past few years because of the pandemic, the remote work craze and all that. Denver, Colorado down 5.6% year over year. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee down 5.4%. Nashville, Tennessee down 5.2%. I know several people that moved to Tennessee from California. Dallas, Texas 4.3%. Austin, Texas, down 4.2%. Same thing. I know numerous people that moved to Dallas, Texas, and also read about numerous people. Chicago, Illinois, down 4.1%. San Antonio, another Texas town, down 4.1%. Phoenix, Arizona, down 4.5%. Charlotte, North Carolina, down 3.8%. And rounding out the top 10, Atlanta, Georgia, down 3.4%. So, again, not big, huge drops, but those are leading the way. Remember, on the way down... Price drops are more um, meaningful than price increases. Remember, if something increases 100%, the price has doubled. Let's say $100 to $200. That's a 100% increase because it doubled. Well, you only need a 50% decrease from the 200 back to the 100 to get to where the, you were as far as the dollar amount. So 100% on the way up is only 50% on the way down. So these decreases, let's say 5.6% in December, that erases over a 10% increase. You see what I'm saying here? So deflation is much more impactful than inflation. All right, let's move on here, folks. Another sign that consumers are not looking so wonderful here. Personal bankruptcies are on the rise and we are up 16% year over year. Still low compared to pre-pandemic levels, but definitely on the rise. Now think how much worse it would be if we didn't have the ability to create endless amounts of money out of thin air to create 
all these jobs. And like we talked about earlier, one of the leading sectors for job creation for many years now has been government jobs. Think about that. So if we had the sound money or a limit on the amount of money we can just create, then you would have seen this whole thing come collapsing down many, many years ago, many years ago. Speaking of people spending and economic growth, remember, the more debt people take on, that looks like it's a growing economy because you have gross domestic product, product, which is GDP, 70%, which is consumer spending. So more debt and the availability of credit from the banks and the more deregulation would cause more spending and cause the illusion of economic growth when really economic growth should be redefined as debt accumulation because that's what it's based on. But what do we have? When I went on vacation here just over the past few days, it was more work than when it was relaxation, but we called it a family vacation because it was my family. We went to a place in Orange County called uh, Great Wolf Lodge, which is a hotel with uh, basically a indoor water park. Let me just pull up some pictures here of the place. All right, for those that don't know or haven't been to this place or haven't heard of this place, Great Wolf Lodge, and I went to the Orange County location, has a huge indoor water park. You can see some of the slides here. And this is just off the internet. I was going to show my personal pictures, but my wife is paranoid about showing uh, kids in the photos. She doesn't want me to show my kids or our kids. Um, but yeah, huge indoor water park combined with the hotel and also a lot of restaurants in the hotel, a lot of things to do. They had a bowling alley, many different restaurants in there. Like you could go to uh, Dunkin' Donuts, which is more than just donuts. You can get breakfast sandwiches, coffee, uh, other restaurants in there, like a full-blown buffet is in there. And of course, the price for the inner hotel restaurants was much more than if you would have went out and just bought food somewhere. So what we did is we ended up buying a lot of fast food. And that's another reason why I don't go on vacation that much. It's mostly fast food for like two or three days. And uh, I don't feel the greatest right now because uh, me and fast food, maybe once a week, twice a week, we'll do okay. But I start feeling not too well if I eat fast food for several days. Here's a picture of the lobby. So nice place. They had a fireplace back there. Uh, they're starting to put up Christmas decorations. Uh, the slides, you go down the slides very quickly. Some with inner tubes, some not. The whole weekend for a family of five at this place, at this Great Wolf Lodge, was right around $500, just under $500, so really not bad. Um, if I factored in the price of gas, I'd have to say more than $500, maybe closer to $600, because it was about 100 miles from where I live. Uh, and the place was packed, I mean, just a zoo uh, full of people. And this was during the week when school is in. When school is in, it wasn't um, a weekend, it wasn't a holiday, it's not, you know, Thanksgiving break yet. So when kids should have been in school, the place was still packed, folks. And it just tells you that people are willing to spend money to have fun. And it's just going to continue, especially if we see this bank deregulation, you're going to see people out spending money, money they don't have, more borrowed money. Debt continues to grow in the background. And people that don't really pay attention to these statistics and the, the numbers and the analytics behind the economy like we do here on this channel, they're just going to look around and say, look at all these people spending money. The economy is good. Uh, nobody's in debt. Nobody has any problems. But the reality is people are in a lot of debt and people are starting to grow concerned, especially one half of the country that believes uh, a certain uh, set of uh, talking points or narrative that the new administration is going to bring in an economic collapse, which could be inflationary, could be stagflationary, folks. There's too many balls up in the air, so to speak, to try to figure out exactly where everything is going to land. And there's still a lot of things that we're yet to see. And I'm sure a lot of new announcements, a lot of new things are going to happen in the very near future. We're talking in the next few weeks with the announcements and also a lot of risk out there, folks. Let's talk about the war situation right now. And then we'll wrap this one up here, folks. We've got just a couple headlines. Russia says hypersonic missile strike uh, coming into the country. And uh, apparently they shot these down. And they were now authorized by the U.S. The U.S. were not only funding it, but were authorizing uh, more deadly strikes, which is very, very concerning when you have the uh, the nuclear risk out there, folks. And I'm hoping that's, that's the black swan nobody wants to see uh, that brings the economy down, folks. 
Moscow threatens. The Kremlin warns it can strike U.S. base using advanced weapons as NATO scrambles jets and Russia's unleashing ICBMs for the first time after Storm Shadow Strike. I won't get too much into the details because it's kind of gory, uh, but folks, we have that risk out there still. So I'm, I'm remaining cautious that a lot of people are bullish. They're pouring their money into the markets all in, in some cases, because they see this growth ahead and deregulation and lower interest rates, folks. It's all on the back of more debt, and it's all bank-supported growth, which should, we shouldn't even call this growth. If, it's, if growth is based on debt, to me, it shouldn't be called growth. It should be called shrinkage because people's wallets are shrinking and people's savings accounts are shrinking. For the most part, not everybody. I hope yours is expanding. I hope you're doing better than ever. Um, but if you're among the population that's concerned and maybe even frightened on what's ahead, uh, you're not alone. Like half the country, more than half the country feels that way. So what do you think about all this, folks? Did I spend too much, $500, to go on some water slides and stay at a hotel and eat at some restaurants? Um, anyways, we had fun. Hope you're doing well, everybody. Thanks for coming back to the channel. For those of you that are new to the channel, please make sure you are subscribed. Very important not to miss any economic financial news. Stay ahead of the curve. And we'll talk to everybody very soon. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.